podcast, Vader and I will be discussing day three of training camp. Also be going over the entire week, including media day, and just kind of giving our, our last thoughts on uh, what we saw during media day and all three days of training camp. So make sure you stick around and let's get to the show. BetOnline is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. BetOnline has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega cast and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Jabari for three and the win. Yeah! We're here to feel Rockets News. This is the Rockets Field Podcast presented by the Believe Network and sponsored by Bet Online. And of course, today we'll be talking about day three of the Rockets training camp. Uh, they were, you know, at practice today. We actually were able to see some scrimmage footage for the uh, first time, at least the media uh, yesterday. Of course, we saw a lot of them, a lot of them doing drills uh, throughout practice. Um, the day before is really more just about. At least the part we saw is about them, you know, free throw line, you know, practicing jumpers, things like that. But today we actually were able to see some footage of them um, actually out on the court together, at least the last five or six minutes. So we're definitely going to get into that. But before we get too far into it, I want to give my co host a chance. It's been a while since we've been back on the show together. So I'm going to give him a chance to introduce himself. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Vader. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Vader Sports and also on Instagram uh, for your Rockets related news. I post a little bit of text and stuff too from time to time. So, like I said, we are going to be talking a little bit about the training camp today. We also have a couple couple of interview questions I asked uh, Dylan Brooks and Jabari Smith. We're going to be giving kind of our opinion on that because there's a little bit, there was some interesting information that came from that as well. But uh, before you know, we go into that part of it. Um, since it's the first time I've I'm talking to you, Vader, since training camp started, what's kind of been your overall impression of not just training camp? Uh, all the way back to Mondays, which seemed like five weeks ago, uh, uh, when they had their media day, and we were able to, you know, be able to talk to pretty much the entire team almost. Yeah, so like I was kind of watching to see like if they were going to say anything. Uh, you know, they 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 weren't going to give us like too much, right? They're not going to like, yeah, you know, you know, like over over speak and, and say, yeah, we're going to win X amount of games this year. We doing this, we doing that. Uh, so like a lot of the interviews kind of went. Uh, according to how I imagine they would go, but it was just kind of good to see everybody back in the building, get to see, you know, like what guys look like now. Uh, Reed Shepard showed up with a with a Ron Burgundy from the Anchorman mustache, and yes. <laughs> I was just like, that was crazy. Well, um, we got to see a man. Um, got the Jalen the Jalen Green interview was, was kind of interesting because yeah. uh, like he had a hot mic before he actually started speaking, and they were just talking about like. Um, the food or whatever. Yeah, it was, it was funny, man. Like, we we yeah. watched it on live stream. And so it was a good time just to know that, you know, basketball is around the corner. It's, it feels it feels like this offseason was, like, super long. I don't know why, because we had Olympics, but it yeah. just seems like we haven't seen basketball in so long. And so, like, I, I'm just ready for it now. Yeah. And and I talked about it a little bit in previous podcast, but Stephen Adams, he's definitely going to be, like, a, a mm-hmm. highlight of the of the year. Um, I didn't expect him to, uh, when I asked him about screen assist, <laughs> he was like, do y'all even look at that stuff now? So and I guess he's kind of just used to, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, they just look at kind of just, you know, surface level stats. So I guess he was kind of surprised that I even brought that up or maybe he don't even pay attention to it, whatever the case is. It was, it I'm was glad you refreshed my memory on that. Cause I was supposed to mess with you about that. I, as soon as I heard you ask him that, I said, Oh, he went straight to the screen assist question. So yeah. nah, you had me laughing on that. And then yeah. just like a lot of the insight, like he he's not just a big, you know, bruiser dude. Like he actually yeah. knows basketball. He knows the game oh, of yeah. basketball. And you could tell from his answers. Um, I don't know who it was, but somebody specifically asked him about um, playing with like, you know, guys like Jalen Green uh, yeah. in comparison to like he played with Ja Moran in the past. He's played with Russell Westbrook in the past, just yeah. explosive guards. And he said, well, and I'm paraphrasing here, obviously, I don't have a quote in front of me, but um, he mentioned that like to the, to, you know, to the naked eye, to somebody that's just turning on the game, you see 
John Moran, you see Russell Westbrook, and both of those guys are super athletic, high flyers, dunkers. And so you think they play the game the same way, and they really don't. They play with a different pace. Um, you know, the way they the way they work the screen is differently. And so the way they think the game is differently. So he said a lot of um, what he's going to end up doing is, um, you know, learning the guys that he's yeah. playing with, you know, learning what they like, learning what they like to do and how he can best help them. So I thought that was a that was an excellent answer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was some some like I said, really good information. He's definitely going to be one of the go to interviews all season long that, uh, for sure. And I also just want to kind of get your take on, you know, the three days of training camp. We don't. They're not more than likely they're not practicing tomorrow. We don't know for sure. Um, hopefully we'll find out here like, you know, sometime later tonight. So they may not even practice tomorrow, but I want to kind of get your opinion on, you know, just kind of your takeaways from the first three days of training camp. And, you know, as they kind of rev up and get ready for, you know, next week's uh, preseason opener. So obviously a lot of the stuff we see, you know, online is like the good stuff. They don't like don't get a lot of the stuff uploaded that's that's like not highlights. But yeah. like today, for example, I saw the Rockets put out a clip of uh Reed Shepard made like three really good back to back plays. I think he made a mm-hmm. shot, he stripped somebody, um, made a really good assist, then he like blocked Shangoon. <laughs> you yeah. know, like he's out he was out there causing havoc. He was, you know, he just looked like a force out there for as much as somebody you know, his size could be a force. He, he looked like one. And then, yeah. you know, the previous day they showed him making all those threes in a row. Um, I saw some clips where Jalen looked really good. I saw some clips where Shingoon and a man looked really good. So, yeah. um, I don't know, man. Like I said, they, we, we don't see, like, the stuff that they're screwing up on. We know, like, these guys are young and they still got a lot yeah. of stuff to work on. But just, um, I don't know. I think they put in a lot of work over the summer. I know Shingoon did. Um, and he said, you know, wait and see. That was one of the things he had said on, on media day was, like, You'll see, you know, if they were asking him about a shooting and stuff like that. And so, like, I'm looking, hey, show me, because that's one thing we've been saying, like, since his rookie year. Like, his, his jump shot is pretty good. It looks pretty good, like, form-wise, touch-wise. There's no reason that he should be not shooting when he's wide open. And there were too many times, even last year, where he just turned down wide open shots, and that, that can't happen anymore. Like, yeah. a player of his caliber, like, if he had, like, we, we've been saying this, it's like a broken record, if he can add – any kind of like threat from the outside, he's going to be virtually, um, you know, unstoppable offensively. And then, like we know, Jalen's been working. Like, hopefully, it is. It's always been that mental thing with him. Always been a consistency thing with him. And um, I think this year, like, you know, you know, I'm a big fan uh, of these guys. But I think this year, for the first time ever, I think we can say like none of these none of these guys are going to get a pass this year. None of these guys are going to get an excuse mm-hmm. this year. You know, there, there's probably one one guy right now who I can say, okay, he he might get a pass, and that's Reed Shepard because he's a yeah. rookie. But like everybody else, it's kind of like you know, put up or shut up time. And you know, the Rockets are at a at a stage now where I think they want to identify who that young core really is, right? Um, yeah. We saw with the Boston Celtics, and I, I was saying this in a space. Um, you can get attached to these guys, and I, and I and I like I said, I love a lot of these guys. But ultimately, I'm a Rockets fan, so I'm I'm more in favor of the Rockets doing whatever they need to do to build this team out. And the Boston Celtics had a lot of success, but they also failed a lot, right? And yeah. so and they, and they traded guys who you thought were probably uh, mainstays on that team and brought other guys in, and they they kept they kept their core, but they kept shuffling the deck a little bit until they found that 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 right formula. And so I think that's where what we're going to start seeing from the Rockets. They're going to identify that core. And then the rest of these guys, I don't want to say they're expendable because that sounds harsh. But, I mean, you know, it's a business. And the, the business is winning basketball games, winning championships. Yeah, I mean, like, like you say, and you probably sound, I probably sound a little bit different now because I just noticed it was coming through my headphones. But uh, like you said, the Rockets are really going to be looking now to – hey, who are we going to really keep? Because a lot of these guys' contracts are going to be coming up soon. We know about Jalen and Alper, you know, contract situation. But you're also going to have right behind them Jabari Smith and Tari Eason and then eventually Cam. And I mean, they can't, you know, realistically, they're not going to be able to pay the entire core seven. Let's just be honest. So they're going to at some point have to figure out, like, hey, who do we want to prioritize and and who do we want to kind of wait and see? That kind of just leads me into my my um, the next part I want to go into, and that was, was when I talked to Jabari Smith earlier, because um, uh, Ime Udoka had mentioned during his uh, part of the interview, he had mentioned that Jabari is one of the guys that he's you know, saw over the summer that's gotten better as far as his jump shot. 
as far as how it's releases and how quicker it is and you know just being able to know when to take certain shots so i asked jabari like because he has improved in first two seasons. He doesn't get talked a lot about it as much as Jalen and Alperin, but his three point shot has went up each of his first two seasons. So I asked him, like, do you feel like you can get to a 40% mark eventually to where that will kind of just open up the entire game? And this is what he said. Shoot more threes this year. Uh, definitely raise my attempts, you know what I'm saying? And just just, just be a shooter, you know what I'm saying? That's what this team needs. That's what this team wants out of me. And uh, I'm ready to take that role on, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm definitely a 40% three point shot. I've done it before, you know what I'm saying? So. Let's just, just get back to that. Yeah, so, I mean, like you see there, he seems pretty confident. And, and the one thing I took away from that is that he wants to shoot more threes next season um, and get his attempts up because a, a lot of times, not necessarily at the level of Alperin, but uh, sometimes Jabari didn't get off his shots quickly or he may have passed up shots. So I expect him to be a lot more aggressive this season. He seems like that's something he's talked about a lot this entire off season, even during media day, when I asked him, like, what's kind of some of the areas you want to operate more on the court? And he was saying that, you know, he want to operate more in the post, but really just want to be more aggressive and get into the basket as well. So he seemed like he's going to be a lot more aggressive than he has in the first two years. So don't, don't be surprised if you see his shot attempts go up this season, because he seemed like one of the younger guys that wants to be more aggressive going into next year. I hope so. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, even though he made a huge leap last year, I mean, because let's just be honest, rookie rookie season, he had a he had a bad rookie season. Um, but I'll, you know, if you look at any any pretty much any statistic. Right. Um, and then last year, like he, he looked good at times and then he still struggled. I mean, he was still really young, um, yeah. but like a 611 dude who can shoot threes. And um, he's, he's supposedly been working on his handle. That's one of the things he like you said, he's been talking about that, trying to get to the basket. So like this guy has the potential to be a weapon. Um, and we don't like, I think a lot of us have written him off and, and it's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm guilty too at times. Uh, and you have to remember like these guys are 19 years old. This guy's, you know, 20 years old. Yeah. And even when you think back to the, to the like older days of basketball, like a lot of guys came in the league and they, they weren't ready to play basketball at 19. It's very <laughs> rare. Yeah. We, we think guys are going to come in and be LeBron. Whatever well, was just like one LeBron. <laughs> You know, there's one, one LeBron. Like, a lot of these other dudes, they took a few years to develop. Like, Kevin Garnett was um, – he wasn't terrible his rookie year, but he wasn't Kevin Garnett. Dirk Nowitzki was terrible his rookie yes. year. He looked like an absolute bust. A lot of people don't remember that. Dirk, yeah. Dirk looked like trash. I'm, I'm not – and this is not even an exaggeration. Uh, so it just takes some of these big dudes a little bit longer to develop or they de – you know, nobody develops at the same rate. So yeah. if he does – if he has actually, like, gotten better and improved at these things, I think it kind of – he's one of the guys that's that's a swing guy for me. If he actually can become anything close to what they projected him to be when they drafted him, it just raises our ceiling so much as far as what this team can be. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that all the things that he's saying is, is not just uh, lip service. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope it's true. Yeah, because like I said, I mean, he's definitely – he's kind of the key to a lot of this. Of course, Rockets only going to go as far as Alperin and Jalen take him. But if you can get – like you said, what they were expecting from Jabari to be a true three and D, you know, stretch big. If they can start really getting at this season, if he's shooting 38, 39% and aggressive at the same time, we saw him improve his rebound in last season. So he's he's definitely already became a better rebounder. But if he can really start to push that three point percentage up and actually, you know, operate a little bit more in the post or in the around the mid range elbow, I mean, that'll make a huge difference because that takes a lot of pressure off of. You know, Alperin is being like kind of the only guy scoring on the inside. I mean, of course, we have Ahmed, um, but as far as the starters. So, I mean, that'll, that'll make a big difference. And just real quickly talking about, I don't want to forget to mention this about Ahmed. Um, uh, it may not translate to the court, but his confidence level just seems like on a whole nother level this year, just from the way he talks to the media, the way he's like kind of interacting with the other players. The way, like his, I said, team, the way his teammates are talking about him. Exactly. I think Ahmed um, is going to have a huge year this year. And, you know, if if they ever got to a point where we like, hey, somebody's going to be jumping into that starting lineup, I don't. I think they're going to stay with the same starting lineup again the season. But that he would be the person that would be more likely the person that moves into that starting lineup if they ever do make that change. Either at, I don't. I don't think it'll happen at point guard because Fred Van Vliet is going to be the starting point guard regardless. But at at one of those four positions. I wouldn't be, you know, if they ever do make that change, he would be the guy because I think he's going to have a, you know, huge 
season on offense, but especially like on defense because he's their most versatile defender already. And that's what really excites me about him in particular is like he has a unique ability like and I don't think anybody else on this team has what he has as far as being able, like you said, he can impact winning in so many different ways yeah. on both sides of the floor. You know, he's a he's a force offensively, even though he can't shoot, which is like I, I always go back to that because it's just crazy to me how like good he was last year. And he was like, he was no threat, at, you know, past, you know, outside <laughs> yes. of the paint. And yeah. like, uh, for him to like, you know, cause that much havoc and that much disruption, you know, on both sides of the court and be such a flawed player, it just makes me wonder, like, what can he possibly be if he can, like, you know, just become respectable as a shooter? You know, I mean, like, even like thirty percent as at three, which is bad. You know, don't get me wrong, that's bad, but like. Uh, right now, he's just really like don't even don't even go out there. You know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. And, and, and defensively, like, geez, like we saw him, we saw him play like amazing defense on some of the best players in the NBA last year. And it's not even just on ball; it's off ball. Like he he literally um, is probably capable of doing pretty much anything you want a player to do out, outside of shooting. Yeah, and just real quick before we get to the last clip. Uh, something that stood out to me that wasn't on camera time. He was just talking while he was walking away. That he was just talking about some of the guys he guarded during, um, you know, when he was with the you know U.S. Select team. He was talking mm -hmm. about, yeah, I was guarding Steph Curry. I was guarding, you know, SGA. I was guarding, you know, you know, people from point guards all the way up to center. So that just kind of goes along with him being able to guard one through five, of which he, you know, told me yesterday when I asked him about that, and that's just going to make a huge difference. Uh, for him to be able to get on the court and, you know, stay on the court throughout the game. Uh, there was one other clip I want to get to early. I also talked, asked to Dylan Brooks about kind of just the Rockets' reputation because Dylan Brooks has had this reputation his entire career of being, you know, one of the toughest players in the league. And some people may use a different word, but that's the word I'm going <laughs> to use right now. Um, he's always had that reputation, but the Rockets didn't always have the reputation. Well, I remember last year, M.A. talking about, you know, how the Lakers punked them earlier in the season. And how we kind of saw that start to change, like the Rockets. Were yes, after that, fighting. they tried to fight everybody. They, <laughs> they, they were fighting they, everybody. Yeah, man, they was wilding. <laughs> they was out there like Jalen trying to fight Bradley Beal and well, Cam Whitmore for some fight reason. Everybody, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we had a few uh, little scuffles last year after he did that. So yeah, we went from like one extreme to the other. Yeah, so uh, M.A., you know, he talks about it all the time. He loves it. Not, that's why I asked Dylan, does he feel like that's what kind of Rockets or persona they're taking on now? This is uh, what he said. Um, we got to be better on the road. But just, you know, our physicality, um, our confidence within, within one another, um, it's contagious. You know, uh, you know we, we got each other's backs every single time we fall on the floor. Um, and you know, we're hard nosed from each one of us all the way to uh, the last guy on the bench. Yeah, I mean, so as you see there, I mean, that's definitely a reputation. It seems like all the Rockets are starting to take on. When we even heard it through Reed Shepard during his press conferences where he was talking about how his mom, you know, was the toughest one on him. Basically, she said, don't be soft while you're out there on the court. So, I mean, it's definitely something that seems like it's kind of going throughout the entire roster. Yeah, that's something that you definitely need. You know, if you want to compete at the highest level, can't be out there, you know, like backing down from your opponent, being intimidated. And we saw a lot of that. We saw a lot of like uh, um, quitting and giving up in, in previous years. Yeah. And I guess that Ime identified that pretty early on in the season last year. He was yes. like, "Hey, man, we we can't do that." And so, like, we did see us. We did see a change. Um, there's another step to take, though, and that's I think that's what makes this season so so pivotal and so exciting. At the same time, I'm kind of nervous about. It, I'm not gonna lie, because I think the expectations. I keep hearing people throw out you know, 50 wins, 55 wins and stuff like that. And I'm just like, ooh, that's a lot of wins in the yeah. West. And, um, yeah, I want to believe, like, like talk me into that. I, you know, I want some of that too. So yeah. I don't know, man, we'll we'll see. And um, it's right around the corner. We're, we're almost there. Yeah, and we'll get into our expectations as far as win totals, you know, closer we get to the regular season. Uh, so definitely want to get into that. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Uh, let us know down in the comments kind of what have you felt, you know, throughout this entire week, especially with the three days of training cap, at least what from what you've seen, do you feel uh, more confident than you did, uh, you know, during the offseason? Do you feel a lot better now that you actually seen them back on the court? Kind of let us know down in the comments. We'll have our next show probably next week after the Rockets' first preseason game. If I'm not mistaken, it's next Monday. 
So we'll probably have our next podcast on Tuesday. As usual, appreciate the report. Thank you, Vader. We'll definitely be jumping back on next week. So I appreciate you jumping on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, like I said, we're probably going to try to start doing it once the season gets kicked off, try to do these um, at least two a week, one yeah. during the weekday and then one on the weekend. And yeah. So we can keep you updated on, on the Rockets news. Uh, absolutely. We'll definitely be trying to get out more podcasts throughout the season, especially with the team getting better. So we appreciate the support. We appreciate everybody that likes and subscribes to the channel. We we have jumped up probably uh, over 150 subscribers in the last week, week and a half. We're at 2,500 now, so we appreciate the support. And definitely make sure you check out the next episode of the Rocket Field Podcast. <music>